Hey, hey, everybody. It's new comic book day. Sleepy Reader here. I just got back from my comic book shop, picked up a bunch of comics that were on my pull list, a lot, 16, I think. And then I grabbed a few back issues to boot. So, um, yeah, last issue, last week, I found it hard to read 15 comics. So hopefully things will even out. A few weeks ago, I only had three. Um, it is burning hot here in Portland, Oregon. I can remember when we used to have summers where two or three times during the summer, we'd have days that went up to 90 degrees. Um, right now, we've had three days in a row. It's not even really summer yet. Three days in a row in the high 90s, like 97. So things are changing. Okay. Um, I got Spider-Man. What do they call this? Spider-Man Life Story, number four, the 90s. I'm starting to really get into this, uh, despite not being a big fan of the art style. But um, yeah, maybe and even the art style maybe is growing on me a little bit. So look forward to reading that. Hawkman War Without End. I'm assuming, despite that title, that we're moving on from the, the story arc of the first 12 issues. Um, and I think we're getting a new artist, too, on Hawkman. Will Conrad. Who is an artist that I like? I mean, not at the level of Brian Hitch, unfortunately, who really made a sweet comeback, in my mind, in those 12 Hawkman issues. Um, but Will Conrad's a very good and maybe a very good DC artist who doesn't get mentioned much. Maybe he hasn't been on the right book yet. And then super excited for the Immortal Hulk number 19. I'm now all caught up on my Hulk reading. So um, although I feel like I, I uh, shotgun it, all of it so fast, I could still go back and reread it to get more details out of it. I'm not a huge fan of this cover. I'm not a huge fan of this redesign on the, on the um, what's his name, the Abomination. I think to make him more monstrous, I understand what they're doing. Um, and I suppose it's really creative to have all these clawed fingers around his face. But I'm not sure. I, I just don't. Oh, I just flipped open and saw that Harpy is in this issue, which I assume is Betty Ross. But I'm not totally sure. And I'm also real psyched to get issue two of Gogor or Gogor. Uh, they said on the inside of issue one how to pronounce it. Um, oh, look, there's the cover of issue three. Now, a uh, friend on Twitter, Christine, mentioned that this kind of gave it a um, Richard Corbin look. And I can see what she means. I feel like there was some old Richard Corbin cover of some old Richard Corbin comic that looked kind of like this. But the, um, the artist style is not very Richard Corbin. You know, who knows? Richard Corbin may have an influence on this comic. But um, my first thought reading last the last issue was that um, what's his name? Ken Gehring has simplified his style a bit, going more towards what you sometimes find in these kind of middle reader graphic novels like Amulet and things like that. Um, we'll see. I, it's rated T for teen, but I hope it continues to be kind of an all ages book. Probably not all ages is uh, Batman Detective Comics number 1005. Isn't it fun to say 1005? Uh, yeah, I I was kind of getting back into this after finding uh, Tomasi's first arc uh, ended with a giant belly flop. Um, but the previous issue with the huge backfill of the Arkham Knight story was less than stellar for me. But... And I've super been loving the art in here, and it looks like it's still that that incredible art from uh, Brad Walker. It's kind of Brad Walker's moment to really shine. I mean, he did a great job in Aquaman, too, but um, he's really shining, I think, in Detective Comics. Oh, and here's one I'm super excited for also. Another Ahoy comic. Um, Bronze Age Boogie. It's, you know, Ahoy seems to do comics in waves. So in its current wave of comics, Bronze Age Boogie is really the only one I'm super interested in. I do have a copy of, uh, what's it called, Planet of Nerds, which I haven't read yet. 
I tried to read hashtag danger and wasn't that into it, but but I'm loving um, Bronze Age Boogie. Maybe it's it's all about my age and my <laughs> my prime years during the Bronze Age Boogie years. I guess in 1970 I was nine, and by 1979 I turned 18. Okay, Supergirl. Interesting looking cover. I feel kind of queasy about the aged up Superboy. I stopped reading the regular Superman book before they brought him back. But I'm not I'm not happy about that. So this will be my first time reading a comic with the aged up John Kent in it. Um but I like the look of the art. I like the look of the art in here. So we're tying back in even more closely to the Rogel Czar saga. Um, I'm still curious to see what's going to go on. It, it is just script by Andreko. I don't see any mention of, of Bendis there, although it must be obviously tying into all of Bendis' plot plans. And another one I'm super excited for, Silver Surfer number one. We got Donny Cates, Silver Surfer Black number one. I loved the um, Michael Allred, Dan Slott, Silver Surfer, and I'm assuming this will be very, very different. But um, Trad Moore on art has me very excited because I, he just wrapped up a six-issue indie book from Image. What was it called? New World, I think. And his art blew me away in that book, and as did his uh, colorist. But this one actually, you, you know that People have a high opinion of something when they put Dave Stewart on as the colorist. So we have Dave Stewart listed as, oh man, that paper is flimsy. Um, yeah, this doesn't look as intricate artwork as we saw in New World, but still, it's going to be a fun trip. Looks a little bit like Alex Nino there to me. So excited to see what Kate's and Trad Moore and Dave Stewart can do with Silver Surfer. Infinite Dark number seven. I misplaced an issue of this. I was enjoying it. I think I read the first three or four issues and then misplaced an issue. And so I now have issues piling up and I need to search. I have a couple of comics like that where I let them slide by and then I misplaced an issue because I, I live in a very chaotic life. Gunning for Hits, another favorite comic of mine. Issue number... Six. This cover is entirely different than the style of the other covers. I wonder if it's a, um, it's not a variant. So they just decided to mix it up and, and go for a different kind of pulpy cover look. I like it. I like it. There's this uh, has been um, singer who seems a lot like David Bowie, although I don't know if David Bowie was ever viewed as a has been, even when his records were selling less. Wow, the art looks really good inside here too. Um, as I've said in some other videos, Gunning for Hits is something I'm really loving. I don't know who the audience is for it. You kind of have to be into the music trivia or interested in behind the scenes of the music business, but also be okay with it being fictionalized and uh, with a lot more gunplay in it. <laughs> and here's one I must have, I assume I put this on my pull list, Sonata. I must have seen something in previews that made me, oh, it's because it's written by David Hine, who I've had good luck with in the past. Um, and someone named Brian Haberlin. So, and the art's by Brian Haberlin. So, so that's good. It's a, 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 a writer who's involved with the writing. I Sorry, an artist who's involved with the writing. Usually that means he'll work even harder on the art. And the art looks pretty beautiful in here. I think my hesitation was that often these uh, sprawling fantasy comics from image just don't either they don't work or they get canceled before they get to finish their sprawling story um, i've been burned a number of times there but i decided to give sonata a chance now i i think this is a mistake did i put spencer and Locke on my and i think it's issue three of spencer Locke two i haven't read any other spencer and Locke. did my shop make a mistake i Ah, darn. Okay, I may have to return that to my shop. 
But or maybe I'll look through it and decide I should stick with it. If any of you read Spencer and Locke, let me know if if that's something I should try. Although I've got so much to read here. Oblivion Song 16, uh, a always fun read, always awesome color and art. I put the color first because I think the, the superstar of this comic is the colorist. Oh, this one shouldn't be on my pull list either. Unless I forgot. I'm pretty sure I dropped Wonder Twins. I remember, I thought I made a video about how I didn't like it and sent a letter right away, an email right away to my shop. So I'm going to have to redouble on that and point out I don't want Wonder Twins. Um, but maybe, you know, uh, I gave it, I thought I gave it three, no, I guess I gave it four issues. I liked it, I liked one of those four issues and I decided to drop it. Uh, maybe I'll like this issue. It is by Mark Russell, who otherwise is writing I like a lot. And I'm actually kind of psyched on a lower level maybe, but for this Peter David symbiote Spider-Man, um, I thought it was quite good by issue two. I had a problem during issue one that it that the artwork doesn't match the style of Peter David's writing, which is very solid old school writing and kind of funny. And it's... Uh, Greg Land does not really do funny unless you say, well, there's something funny about the way that person's face looks. And then my uh, shop owner threw in this uh, ash can of a new upcoming Cullen Bunn comic. Um, I think these are supposed to just be for the shop owners to preview things. So um, since I spend a lot of money there, he decided to give me the ash can, I guess. It's... Uh, it's probably a, a comic that I would have been... I may have already added it to my pull list for all I know, actually. Um, but I'll, I'm going to definitely check this out. And if I don't have it, haven't already added it on my pull list and I like it, it'll go there. And then um, I couldn't resist some Jack Kirby Black Panther. Uh, if I were smart, I would just read this on Marvel Unlimited. It's, it's not known to be one of Jack Kirby's greatest... Uh, Greatest Marvel works. Uh, Black Panther is one of his great creations, but his return to the character in this Black Panther series doesn't have... I don't know. Actually, I think I will like it. Um, or I do like it. And I should just cut that out. So I got two Jack Kirby Black Panthers. And so um, I get 50% off, so they would have cost me $6.00. And 550, and then I don't know why, but I this is obviously not a Jack Kirby Black Panther. The cover is by Bing, Binghamham and Layton, um, but I just saw it there, and I six dollars also, and I just grabbed it. And then, you know, I was th I've been thinking about my collecting habits and how they are shifting. Um, and one of the reasons they're shifting is because of money. I, money is not so tight for me as it was for most of my life. So um, my comic book shop <clears throat> had this sale on, on its website only for 50% off a lot of the back issues they sell on the website, which are supposed to be somewhat the higher end issues, I guess. And um, if you're... If you're local to Portland, you can leave them a note and they'll refund you the postage and you can come pick it up at the store. So I got Thunder Agents number one, and this now will complete my Thunder Agents collection because I also have from eBay number five, which was the only other one I didn't have um, coming in the mail soon. But its original price was $50, and I um, so I paid $25 for it, and that's... That's more than I normally pay for a comic. I've, I think the highest I've ever paid for a comic is probably $30. I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, I've, obviously, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me buy a lot of expensive hardbacks. But um, in terms of an individual issue. So um, because I don't go for the high-end copies and I look for the bargains. Uh, but just out of laziness, I knew I wanted the have the complete Thunderbolts. Th sorry, Thunder Agents, and so I bought this. And I wouldn't say it's that high-end in, in um, condition, but 
The cover looks nice. It's just all worn on the edges here. There's an E on the back. I'm not sure what that means. Um, also says T1109, but I don't think that means anything to me. Anyway, now I have a complete Thunderbolts thing. I think I'm going to do a sleepy vlog soon as I can muster up the energy. Somehow those take more energy than just doing a haul or just quick comic book thoughts. A sleepy vlog where I talk about my changing collecting habits. I will, uh, I don't know, get to that in a few days. Anyway, I'll talk to you all soon. Look forward to your videos and have a great comic book week.